I just found out one of my favorite composers passed. Um, Ollie Wilson, man. You guys, if you're not in the classical music, uh, I don't know what to tell you, but I'll tell you this. I got to express my feelings about Mr. Wilson. I first found out about Ollie Wilson through looking for classical composers of African descent or black classical musicians and composers um, and specifically experimental black composers. And I had only found two, William Grant Still and this man, Ollie Wilson. And not to take away from Muhal Abrams or any of the double ACM people, but um, I, I, I was specifically looking for classical. But even like this man was just as diverse you know um he founded the first electronic music program at a school in america at, at, in a college and i'm gonna i'll read more about that but a lot of his music was a mix man it was totally like he mixed classical music like western classical music with a lot of traditional african music from what i understand um, he went to Ghana for a few years and studied there just to learn that traditional music. And, you know, him and his family went over there. And that's pretty cool, man. Like, he, he went to the source of where, you know, a lot of the music comes from. He reminds me of another classical composer, even though the style is different. Um, Ashinafi Kabete, who is an Ethiopian composer who mixed traditional Japanese music, traditional Ethiopian music, and also um, modern classical music. But he had more of a minimalist approach compared to Ali, in my opinion. But then again, you know, I'm sure they both have great works. Um, and, and I can't say that I've heard every one of their works because classical musicians always have a whole bunch of works for some reason. <laughs> Anyways, but yes, Ollie Wilson was not just an eclectic person, he was an inventor. I mean, I just mentioned that he had the first um, music program for electronic music. You know, uh, he was the first to do that. Not only did he do that, he was one of the first of electronic music composers as well. Um, he had a, uh, it's a full electronic music piece called Cetus. You'll hear that, you know. And, and and you'll hear what I mean. It sounds like space music. It's so cool. Another one uh, which combined classical instruments with electronic music. And you could see and hear. I'm saying see for a reason. You could hear the influences of, of man. Just the African influence. I, I, okay, I won't give it away. I would just put it in the uh, descriptions. But yes, you can hear the electronic music. I mean, the electronic instruments with the classical instruments and, and just yeah voices is a trip man you guys got to hear that piece by him anyways i'm going to read this article and um yeah uh and i might add a little bit more two cents worth but i'm sure y'all just want to get to know this cat so i'm gonna read this article holly wilson an esteemed musicologist and composer who experimented with african styles and electronic instruments within traditional western classical works has died he was 80 a long time professor at uc berkeley and previously oberlin college in ohio wilson was an acclaimed composer who won several awards including the guggenheim fellowship and the rome prize besides a notable scholar of african music Wilson was also an early adopter of electronic music. He opened a studio focused on the burgeoning genre at Oberlin Conservatory of Music in, 19, in the 1960s. It would become the, techno, the technology in music and related arts program or Timara the first program of its kind at a conservatory. That's groundbreaking, especially back then. Ollie was a very important, I'm sorry, Ollie was very important
for the department, for the campus, and for the study of African American music more broadly, in addition to his significant impact as a composer and a professor of composition. UC Berkeley Professor Ben Brenner told the school's public affairs apartment. I'm sorry, department. Sorry about that, you guys. Born in St. Louis in 1937, Wilson started his career, his music career, as a pianist, playing jazz and other genres in bars around town as a teenager. At one early gig, Wilson and his bandmates backed a then-unknown Chuck Berry who was on his way to changing the musical landscape with songs like Johnny Be Good. Funny thing is I read another article where he was like, Chuck Berry was so loud, you couldn't really even, he couldn't really hear him. I, I forget whether he backed him up on bass, clarinet, or piano. I think it was piano. But he was in that band. And he says Chuck was loud, like his guitar was loud. <laughs> we considered that silly music because we were jazz aficionados. Oh, that's funny. Wilson said later about the show. Wilson went on to attend several universities, finally earning his Ph.D. from the University of Iowa in 1964. Three years later, Wilson composed Setas. That's the piece that I was talking about. While he was studying at the University of Illinois studio for experimental music, the work would win a prize at the first international electronic music competition. Amazing. I heard Milton Babbitt actually was one of the composers that gave him the award, too. Milton Babbitt, Babbitt is like a, a renowned composer in that whole avant garde spectrum. A prolific composer, Wilson received commissions from New York, the New York Philharmonic, the Black Music Repertory Ensemble, and the Chicago Symphony for his work. His most notable pieces include Visions of I'm sorry, Visions of Visions and Truth, Symphonia, and In Memorial In Memoriam Martin Luther King. Wilson joined the music department at UC Berkeley in 1970 and stayed there for over 30 years, retiring as a professor in Mitris in 2002. He was the head of the department from 1993 to 1997, and early in his tenure, or tenure, he served as he served in a chancellor's office, leading at leading leading administration administrative efforts to address equity. Colleagues later credit Wilson for expanding the music department curriculum. He was the most important Afro American African American composers of what we would loosely call classical music as opposed to jazz or pop. UC Berkeley, John Roberts told the Daily Call or Daily Cal. Wilson's daughter, Don Wilson, says her father died on March 12th due to complications of dementia. A, a memorial, well, I don't have to read that. But yeah, man, he was definitely prolific, you know, um, Sorry, I'd like to show you guys some other pictures that he has, and, and one in particular. Here's Ollie teaching in 1968. Pretty cool picture of him. Here's Ollie with two other legends. For you guys that don't know who this is, this is Max Roach right here, one of the sickest drummers. You got to check out that Freedom Now speech. Here's Ollie right here. And there is the man, the myth, Ornette Coleman. For you guys who do not know who Ornette Coleman is, you need to look him up. Definitely has had some interesting modern um, jazz and classical pieces and, and funk. I mean, he was one of those jazz artists that 
went out, <laughs> you know, of the so-called genre. I don't want to say so-called, but yeah. But he, he, you know, he got a lot of flack for it. And that's a whole nother video. Ernest Coleman was definitely an experimentalist, you know, um, even with the way he looked. But this is amazing. Three legends right here, man. Ornette Coleman, Ollie Wilson, and Max Roach, who plays drums like lightning. Yeah. May you rest in peace, Ollie Wilson. May your memory be eternal. You know, your works speak for themselves. And thank you for the great music and talent that you have given us. I hope you guys like this article, and hopefully you guys will check out Ollie's music. He deserves to be... Harold, I don't know if I'm using it the right way. Harold, <laughs> I can never say that word, but he deserves to seriously be honored, man. This guy has opened up a lot of doors, you know, and is a great composer that needs to have his just due. May his memory be eternal. Peace to all of you.